This episode is brought to you by PopCultureZone.com. For all your cleaning and pressing needs and as low as $5.99 a book, be sure to check them out. With over 8,000 books cleaned and pressed, PopCultureZone.com. What's going on, guys? It's Brian and Jack with Superman's Men's Comics. And, of course, we got a new week, so we got another three up three down for you that's right we're talking about this comic book market trends we're gonna give you three hot market trends and three that are kind of cooling off but sometimes offer some great buying opportunities don't we jack absolutely and this week is no different there are definitely some major uptrends but we've got some downtrends and they come from all over the place all different walks some buying opportunities some uh some missed boats by publishers um as well as some news that just doesn't stack up so we've got a good variety this week brian yeah, we even have some that trend into previous three up, three down weeks just recently. But Absolutely. enough talking about it. We're going to get into it right now, starting with that first three up trend. And we're talking about that Donnie Cates Thor run that's going on right now. Yeah, you really have to say the run, right? Because, yes, issue number five is the issue that everyone is talking about right now with the first appearance of Black Winter kind of in full and as himself. But the, if you look at the entire run, from issues one through five, each one of these issues is selling above cover price. And this is pretty indicative of what Donny Cates has the ability to do with a new series. When people jump on and that reader buzz starts to really build organically week to week to week, what ends up happening is people start putting these sets together. People start putting these runs together. And it's something that you don't see kind of across the hobby. But if you think about Venom, if you think about Silver Surfer Black, if you think about his brief run with Guardians, um, and the only run kind of outside Donnie where I still really see that happening is maybe some of the Hickman X-Men stuff or uh, Al Ewing's Immortal Hulk. Um, those are really the, the really collected sets. And uh, I, I think this trend is going to continue. Now, I do think orders will go up on Thor books as more and more retailers kind of get hip to the fact that people are buying Thor at a clip they don't usually but at the same point, um, I think Donny Cates is going to keep bringing that fire. Yeah, the one thing I like about Donny Cates, we've seen it, like you mentioned, in Venom. We saw it in Absolute Carnage. We've seen it in Silver Surfer Black. He likes to take these small little threads from different story arcs and maybe even different titles and pulls on them just enough and gradually keeps pulling it out and playing and building those characters. We talk about character building. We talk about world building. There's one that's masterful at it right now, and that's Donny Cates. He keeps drawing you in to that title not to mention he likes to tweet and you know build the solicit for his own titles but the story itself does that as well and each issue keeps building on it and like i said it when we were talking about in the bolo show thor number five when it ended i wanted to read number six right at that moment and i think the rest of the comic community feels the same way so number six already has that anticipation that and it hasn't even come out yet but the next one we're talking about on three up this week is Similar to what we've talked about before, we all know Joker's hot. We've talked about Joker a lot on this channel recently, but that Joker War story arc that spread out between Batman and multiple times between we got Nightwing, we got Batgirl, we got all types of titles. It's tied in. And another great story. We talk about Donnie Cates, but James Tenian's doing great in the Batman story and all those other writers for those series as well, right? Yeah, now it's all about how it finishes. So we got to kind of make sure we put the asterisk in there and say like, well, you're not speaking in final terms because, uh, you know, I think if you really go back and look at the wedding of, of Batman and Catwoman, people were really enjoying that story up until the moment that they didn't. So that's kind of the, the one caution I'll say, but I don't think we're going down that route here. Um, this feels like a very classic Batman story. This to me feels like the type of story that's going to stand up with, uh, you know, death of the family, where if it, it, it really, again, Tingin coming up under Scott Snyder, I think you kind of feel that in the way that he kind of creates a story, the way he creates characters and brings characters in. Um, and then Punchline. I think Punchline is, is something to be talked about because Punchline is a character that was very easy for us older cynical guys uh, like Brian and myself to sit here and go, yeah, uh, what have you, you know, I've seen these new characters, like you, you, this doesn't mean anything. But, you know, I, I think we should add more faith in, in James Tinian. I think that's really the key because he is the difference maker because he has written this character in such a way that it has made me enjoy reading about Punchline more and more with each issue. 
um, with each issue that she, and I mean each issue she featured in, because, you know, whether it was the Batman series itself or, uh, you know, the Joker 80th anniversary book I thought was great. Uh, yeah, I think that Punchline has really solidified herself. I think that what's coming up with her and Harley, I think is going to have a lot of people talking. Um, Joker War is a prime example on all levels of how you can kind of go about a, a crossover series. You know, you mentioned to me the other day, Brian, like even like Nightwing, his, the books that we talked about this on the channel, we said this was a possibility. It's why we highlighted those Nightwing books on the last call. You know, the, the first Nightwing Joker War books are starting to hit $10, $15 online. I, I think you'll start to see that as a consistent uh, thing throughout the Joker War. Yeah, we've talked on this channel a lot, especially when it comes to these stories or these storylines where we, we, especially myself, was often said where, hey, I'm going to read the main story, but I'm not going to concern myself with the tie-ins. I'll go back and read it again and when it all comes out in trade. But this has been one of those ones where I've been picking up those tie-ins and been enjoying that whole overarching story as this run goes on. But I'm waiting to see how it plays out. And like you said, we'll have to wait to see. But I agree with you. I think I'm anticipating a good good finale to this run yep next one on three up this week this is one that just came out with some news over a tweet also and we were talking about paper girls where they had people reviewing the script right right yeah i think it's supposed to be coming out on amazon prime um obviously this is you know a, a lot of talk about this book ever since it kind of came out brian k vaughn uh cliff chang this was a book that it kind of instant reader buzz. Everybody that's read it's loved it. Uh, it's hit with a, a multitude of different demographics. Um, this is a, a very popular one, I would say, for gentlemen who have a girlfriend who says she doesn't like comics. This is a great one to kind of show her and see, you know, if she can kind of like make that transition. Um, but it, it, this is ready made for a series. And it does not surprise me that these books heat up every time there's kind of the 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 progress moves a little bit it's like when you're watching like that progress bar on the loading screen every time that 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 bar moves just a little bit it seems like the comic market gets excited and what that does is that indicates to me that the, the people really believe in this property so i think we haven't even scratched the surface yet brian of what the potential of these books are i mean them going for like 15 dollars right now 20 dollars because people are starting to get excited means nothing i think when they drop back down a week to two weeks from now down below ten dollars they are must buys again because i think it just shows you that simply uh scripts being read for approval is enough to spike these books and double their price yeah and it's funny because we talked about the anticipation of this and that as you mentioned the progress bar when other new news comes out there's that spike also i anticipate this comes out hits amazon people enjoy it the natural, tangible thing they're going to jump to next, which you always hear pop people talking about. You got a Brian K. Vaughn image series here that just was successful. What is the one we've been waiting on? We want to see that saga. Right, but that's my thing is you may not get saga, at least not for a while. So I think that this is a great opportunity for you to get some of that Brian K. Vaughn goodness that everybody gets excited about um, in a more manageable, packageable uh, uh, way. Yeah, and not taking anything away from Paper Girls, fantastic series. You mentioned the thing, if you have someone that's new, especially female, that's kind of getting in comics, not sure where to start, give them Paper Girls. My wife was that way, picked up the trade, she enjoyed the trade, so definitely stands on its own and definitely on the three up this week. But now we're gonna shift over to the downward portion, which we often talk about offers some great buying opportunities, but the first one on the downtrend this week does not fit that category. And we are talking about the rumor that CBS was going to have a live action Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle last Ronin show. But a week ago, Kevin Eastman tweeted out that that was just not going to happen, right? Right. Yeah. So it's, it's very important to clarify this is not about the last Ronin. The last Ronin is honestly as hot of a miniseries as I've seen. Yeah, um, everyone's in anticipation. Time. You got Eastman and Laird. Eastman and Laird, you, just the fact that the, the history of two comic creators coming together who have been long estranged. This is, I mean, this is, 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 is Kirby and Stan Lee coming back together. Um, and I know some people will say that it's blasphemy that I said that. But that's, I mean, if you're talking 80s and 90s, that's 
that's what this is. And it's, it's two guys who haven't worked together and they're coming back together. And then we, we've talked often on the channel about advancing stories, right? They don't do that in comics amounts. I mean, everybody stays in the same time period. I love the fact that this is an advancing a story that we're actually going to get a Ninja Turtle story where three of the turtles are dead. So I guess that reason in and of itself made the news that we heard a little shocking, a live action Ninja Turtles series on CBS. Uh, but that doesn't surprise me because we know that Ninja Turtles has been wanting to do a live action television series. Um, but Last Ronin being such a dark and mature title. Um, but I was like, hey, maybe the reader buzz is that strong. But then again, when you delve deeper, it's the typical comic book movie news sources um, where I don't know what they're getting their information from, where they're putting up uh, these articles. Uh, and, and, and a lot of them are owned by the same company. So it's just duplication of the same thing. Where this gets dangerous is when then the comic community gets confused. And we got a lot of people who were talking about this. And one of the reasons why, and I've gone on record saying this many times on the channel, I like the Key Collector app. I use the Key Collector app. So I don't have anything negative to say about the Key Collector app. But it is very difficult when there is an alert or a, or a notification or a uh, news bulletin or whatever the term that they define it as talking about this. It says that, that you know, it, it hints like it's a rumor. I don't know how they word it, but they basically say that there's talk of. Um, and like you mentioned, Kevin Eastman already debunked this a week ago, but that showed up in my email from Key Collector today. So it's very tough where I still think there's going to be a lot of people who are going to react to this last round of news. who are going to think that this is, you know, um, kind of a, a still a fluid situation that it's clearly not. That's Kevin Eastman would be the very first person to know about that. So, yeah, this is kind of tough the way that the news cycle works and how it tends to affect comics. But one thing I'll say is anybody who went out and bought last Ronin, if they bought it for the, the, the movie, or TV rumors, I still don't think you're going to be disappointed. I think this series is going to deliver on a whole nother level. It's the reason why we've seen so many exclusives selling out from so many different retailers. And it's the reason why so many people are anticipating this book. $8.99 cover price for this book. But uh, I, I'd pay it every, every dollar. Right. And like you said, it's, we're not faulting the Key Collector app. We're just saying also go off multiple sources if you see something somewhere. If you see it in multiple sources, you can verify it, but this one right out of the creator's mouth himself said this wasn't going to happen. But either way, he mentioned those Last Ronin exclusives. If you want to see a bunch of those Last Ronin exclusives that are available, make sure you guys check out exclusivevariants.com. We've been putting a lot of those covers up there that are available. Yeah, and, and to your point, Brian, I think that's, that's really the point that I, I, I was kind of trying to make is, is, and I think you said it better, is really... Uh, I, this isn't, I'm not faulting Key Collector for this. I'm not sitting here pointing at Key Collector saying that this is key, in, indicative of Key Collector's fault. The reality of the situation is it, we get so many people when stuff like this happens pointing the finger at them saying it's their fault that this happened. And in reality, we, people have to do their research. They've got to look at those sources because that tweet has existed for a week. Yeah, we always say own your results. So yes, but the next one we're talking about in the three down portion this week is another title that we've talked about on here before and how we're just don't feel the buzz. We're talking about that big event for Marvel this summer, Empire. Yeah, now we talked about this on last call. Obviously, this is a major title. Uh, the miniseries itself has been kind of built up to as the event of 2020. On top of it, we know that there's a ton of one-shots and kind of crossover tie-ins. So Marvel's going large with this. And when we talked about this on the last call, we put the call out to the community. We said, look, we don't feel invested in this for some reason. But look, I'm not the end-all, be-all opinion on comics. I, I miss stuff. Sometimes you guys have to put me on what I need to be reading. And I said to the comic community, like, Am I off on this Empire thing? Like, do we, do, do we need to be paying attention to this? Do I need to be pre-ordering this? Or, you know, do I wait for the Omnibus? And you guys kind of resoundingly came back with the, I feel the same way you feel. Um, it seems like the comic community is sleeping on this one in general. There's very little buzz. Um, usually by this time, we would see a multitude of exclusive variants announced for Empire number one. Um, I can only think of one on the top of my head uh at this time but it is one of those things where I, i'm a little bit surprised i think that it'd be easy to blame the pandemic and the kind of that 
lull, but I don't think they ever got this one off the ground. Um, I don't, I know they tried to lay the seeds for this back in Marvel Comics 1000. There was some speculation, some people uh, were interested, but it never really hit a level of like, you know, the, the on demand topic. People are paying attention to Punchline. People are paying attention to various independent series. There's a lot going on in the market right now that, that has people excited. And this just has not commanded that attention. Yeah, I think this one should be straight to digital if you're going to ask me. But either way, um, I think, yeah, I think some of that is the pandemic. You can't use that as an excuse at the same time. But it seems like Marvel in general is kind of getting a push start going into since the recovery in the comics, it seems like a lot of these other publishers have been starting to turn books out. We're starting to see Marvel catch up with that. But to be the headliner for the summer for Marvel, I'm just not feeling it with Empire. But who knows, maybe it'll get people interested in what Fantastic Four and Iron Man, plus you got the new Iron Man se series that's getting ready to come out after this, right? Well, I think, yeah, and I think what'll be interesting is, does the narrative change like War of Realms did? Yeah. Because when we were talking War of Realms a year ago, Everybody had nothing but negative things to say about War Rubs. When you bring it up now, people are like, oh, that was a great story. Because you take the collectability aspect of it, the speculation aspect of it out, when you take away out the monthly reading, when people can get it in trade form, um, I think it changes perspective. So this may be one that we're talking about this way now, but a year from now, once it's all said and done and, been, and the story's been told, that people may feel better about it. So moving to the last one, at the beginning of the three down, we did talk about that CBS live action. Now we're going to move over into the comics again, and we're talking about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle ongoing title right now has kind of seen a slowdown in the trend. The Jenica hype has kind of calmed down, but we also think there's a great buying opportunity on this one, don't we? A huge buying opportunity. And you guys talk all the time that that's what you're looking for out of that down section, and, and, and this one delivers a buying opportunity. In my mind, um, this is a no-brainer, and I'm shocked people are not talking about this. Um, when we, you mentioned last run, and there we're talking more about the news. We're not talking about the books. Here we're talking about the books. We're talking about the fact that currently the ongoing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series has no hype. Um, all of this hype from, came from resellers, flippers, and retailers. Retailers who were creating exclusive variants, resellers and flippers who were buying books to resell trying to cash in on this Jenica thing, right? So they cashed in on 95, they cashed in on 96, they cashed in on 97. It got to a point where it got harder, 98, 99, things slowed down. 100 came out, everybody did their variant. That was a more expensive book, tougher to make a profit. And then everybody went and put their attention elsewhere and <laughs> eject. <laughs> right, it was like, it was, it was over. And this, we've seen this before. Because remember, we've often talked about this Snake Eyes, Death of Snake Eyes story with G.I. Joe, where the same thing happened where the entire comic community was paying attention to G.I. Joe for about three months. And then they moved on and never went and paid attention. Well, if you have turned your eyes away from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you are making a mistake. Because if, remember, we talked about this. We predicted this, didn't we, Brian? We knew this would happen just based on patterns alone. Ninja Turtles' last huge issue was issue 50. And they followed it up by setting a storyline in place that would take almost five years to tell. And that was the introduction of Jenica. Jenica as a human into turning into then eventually a turtle, into eventually a team member, into eventually the death of Splinter. And this whole story played out over 50 issues. And we said, if we were betting men, and sometimes we like to be, we said we'd pay attention to issue 101. I know everybody's looking at 100, but I, I bet 101 there's some new characters. And then the comic community got Mona Lisa, a new character in 101. And everybody was like, see, that's the new character, but it got a little bit of buzz. You'll see when people list that book on eBay, they'll put first appearance of Mona Lisa. But Brian, as great as Mona Lisa is, and actually she's become more and more important in the story, she is not even the most exciting first appearance in that book. It's the tiny albino turtle named Lita who, as we've already seen a flash forward, is going to be a full-grown turtle at some point. In issues 101 and 102, there are a multitude of first appearances. And then in issue 105, the most recent issue, it's gotten national media news from like comicbook.com, CBR. But nobody in the speculation or the secondary market community has paid attention to this. I haven't seen one of your favorite speculation sites out there 
write an article about this. But in 105, they formed a, a new clan, the Splinter Clan, in honor of Splinter. And in honor of Splinter, they adopted four children, just like Splinter did. So now the Ninja Turtles have their own adopted children. And on top of it, if people's minds were blown when the Turtles added a fifth member, they just added a sixth member, and it's not a turtle. It's the it's the Fox character, Alaplex, who's been around since 2011, who was added and get, got the green bandana and was added as the sixth member of the team in issue 105. And she actually shared a kiss with Raphael in that issue, which may not seem like a big deal, but you're talking about kind of like a kid's book that these, these characters were teenagers. This is part of them growing up now. Now they've got children. They're having relationships. This shows real growth in this Ninja Turtles series. Ever since issue 100 up to issue 105, I think that this run is starting to become very important. Do not wait till issue 150 when this is the talk of the comic book community to start going and getting these issues because right now they're on the downside because these covers, are the, the, they're not even cover price for covers A and B. The incentives are at or around ratio. This is a complete stealth play. And the only reason why issue 101 is a little tougher and a little more expensive is because everybody's paying attention to Mona Lisa. And again, that's not the way in the route that I would go. But this is a great buying opportunity. We've seen this play out before. You can roll your eyes because you think maybe Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles isn't your thing. But if you see those prices that Jenica was and still is commanding, it shows you what the potential for this community is. Yeah, we definitely think it's down right now. And I know Jack and I over the past, what, three or four days have been kind of discussing the 101 to 105. But yeah, let us know what you guys think. There's our list for this week. We're going to put comments on the screen right now from last week's videos. But let us know what do you think's hot? What do you think's cold? What do you think of our list? I know um, a lot of people are hoping for that last Ronin live action. It just doesn't seem to be so. Uh, it's, it's heartbreaking for me, too. Yeah, we were excited about it. But. Um, and let us know, are you looking forward to Empire? Um, we keep saying if, if someone can persuade us, I, I think I'm still going to kind of read it. But as of right now, I'm just not hyped on it. No, I want to be persuaded to read it. I want to read it. I would love somebody to comment with a great argument on why I need to read Empire. Yeah. But there it is, guys. With that being said, this has been the Three Up, Three Down. We'll see you guys in the next video.